I have not said anything just yet. Um, I was waiting for Ryan to get in. Hey, Clay, good morning. Can you hear me? I uh, can hear you. Uh, awesome. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. All good on my end. Yeah, the, the stage hadn't started, guys, so... Um... Yeah, we haven't started the actual presentation, I think. Um, we'll just let a few people come in. Definitely a lot more busy than it used to be, like, last year, I remember. You know, things picking up again in terms of um, the market. It's kind of funny, like, whenever you create, like, an event, you can see how many people, like, are interested in and in the past, I don't think we always had over like hundred people interested in this time. We we're like one thirty. Um, I remember wait, a few wait, years can, ago. Can, can people still not hear me? They should be able to now. But yeah, the stage wasn't started, so you, you could see us, but we were just talking to each other. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll let uh, people drift in. We'll get the slideshow going. Yeah, it seems like majority of people can hear you. Um, but yeah, I think we should be good to go. I, I, I almost feel like I can't introduce pet breeding now just because I don't know if I could live with myself knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. As we wait for people to get in, a little bit of a story time uh, for my 45th birthday. I got my first uh, tattoo, and it was two eight-hour sittings. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that uh, on anyone's uh, parts. Uh. <laughs> Good morning, Tom Hawk and Clay. You mentioned your 45th birthday, sir. So. Yeah, 46 now, so I'm getting up there. I'm not, I'm not a spring chicken no more. And two eight-hour sessions, geez, that sounds like quite a long time. Yeah, but... it, it, it was interesting because they took one look at me and they're like, you need, you need to use numbing cream. And I'm like, I, I know, I, know what, I, I look like a softie, but I actually have a high tolerance for pain. Like, I've done endurance sports my whole life. This will be easy. <laughs> um, and first six hours were easy. Hours six to eight were hard. Uh, you you run out of uh, the happy chemicals around six hours in, and then it's just gritting it through. Yeah, I heard like some people it's like they like pass out, um, even when they get this something like the ears pierced or something. So definitely, definitely are some soft people out there. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll see. Like uh, I know my tattoo artist has an Instagram um, that I'm pretty sure. I'm up on. So yeah, I'll find that and I'll share it on Twitter at some point. Um, yeah, yeah. Can, you would love to see that. Maybe like in a town hall, we can like throw it in like a bonus slide. <laughs> a bonus <laughs> slide. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, big uh, calligraphy, like paintbrush strokes into tree branches. Uh, up. All right, guys, for the next AMA, let's make sure we ask we demand <laughs> pictures from Clay. Launch uh, AMA to celebrate the occasion. Yeah, I think we can get there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there is a whole lot to go through, so I yeah, think let's get started. Yeah, yeah, we'll get us started. Yeah, uh, gonna go through a global launch update, a little bit on guild crafting, uh, some fighter guard and enlightenment discussion, and then we have a whole buttload of AMA questions uh, that we will dive into. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who has shown up. I know a lot of you are here uh, very late at night, thanks to shifts and daylight savings time and all of that. Um, Hopefully, uh, we've got a lot of good news. Uh, I've got a little bit of news that I'm not super happy about in the mix, but uh, on the whole, I think it's going to be a really good uh, town hall as we march on to global launch for Guild of Guardians. Um, so yeah, starting with a little ahead. Uh, so 
Last couple of these, we've been working our way down to global launch um, from regional test launch uh, to uh, the most recent uh, read-only uh, edition to now global launch next. Uh, so where are we going uh, regionally? It's globally. Uh, there are a few places that we will not uh, be able to launch, uh, mostly for just legal reasons. This is, in some part, you know, places like China. Um, we just can't. Um, whether we were Web 2 or Web 3, without a whole bunch of uh, hoops. Uh, and a few other places uh, are going to be a little bit uh, touch and go, just uh, depending on legal approval, places like uh, South Korea and Japan. Uh, it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, but yeah, pretty much across the globe, it will be both Web 2 and Web 3. Um, and the big objective is to bring GOG to the world. And we've got so much in store for that. A uh, whole bunch of features uh, coming through. Um, PVP, Guilds v1, you know, Web3 leaderboard rewards finally. Uh, a big one on that whole energy revamp front uh, with dungeon autocomplete. Um, we're also iterating on a lot of things, reducing the number of rooms in dungeons. Uh, there's going to be a new player quest line that's very front and center for anyone uh, who is joining the game. So this will be on uh, the screen in Haven, not hidden away behind a UI to help drive people forward. Brand new Fatui, uh, updates to equipment, updates to UX. A lot of those have already been coming in. We've been trying to make a whole bunch of UI elements bigger. Uh, energy tokens will be working. Uh, Anti-cheat, anti-fraud integrated in uh, Web3 Guardian, Enlightenment, and Radiance, uh, as well as you know, Web3... Uh, web 2 to web 3 minting uh commander leveling updates is that still been one of the primary gates to further advancement uh and refer a friend among some others but that's sort of a high level of a lot of the stuff that we're working on in this big push uh to may 15th um good news is uh as of this moment everything is on track um not everything is completed uh, but it has been moving a pace you know i will continue to sing the praises of my loader they have been making fantastic project uh, progress on the project since uh, I was last in Shanghai. Um, on that note, uh, I will be traveling to Shanghai this Sunday, and I'm going to be spending two weeks uh, working with the MindLoader team basically at MindLoader. This will be a little bit different from some of our previous trips, where those were largely the team uh, in a room uh, having just high-level meetings, aligning on where we're going, design meetings, all of that fun stuff, to uh, basically a little bit of old-school clay, sitting at a, a desk with a, a desktop Unity and getting back into the mix of things. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, with my background, uh, I started off as a technical artist. Uh, I have spent tons of time in Unity with animation, VFX, scripting, all sorts of things. Uh, for those of you who have played Magic Gathering Arena, uh, any, anything from text to animation, uh, a bunch of that uh, is me. So this is a bit of an opportunity to be in uh, the engine uh, with my unloader and in this last push of polish, really get things iterative uh, quickly because this will let us go through iterations in minutes versus days where we're at right now. And if we hit any hiccups in this last push before we start really locking things down and polishing as we get to launch, uh, I'll be right there to work through directly with the design team. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, global launch marketing. So this was one of the AMA questions, but like when marketing? Um, at a very high level, um, there is an absolute ton in the works for global launch. Uh, but at the same time, memory and attention spans are short, so we're planning a launch blitz. Uh, most of this isn't going to come online until right along around launch uh, itself, so that people can essentially see uh, the media and get right into the game wherever they are in the world. Uh, but we've got media and influencer engagements. Um, looking <laughs> forward to announcing so many of these. Uh, partnerships across Web 2 and Web 3. I uh, have been having some very good talks with some of the big movers and shakers in the mix on this front that I really wanted to uh, spoil today, uh, but I was uh, told by my head of marketing that I can't. So uh, just have a little bit of faith, a little bit of weight. Um, I think that's going to be big, particularly for GOG as we get into launch, just sort of taking off on the Web3 side of things. Uh, we've got a global launch trailer that we've shown little bits of that I'm really excited to share with the world. Uh, and also really importantly, immutable ecosystem support. Um, 
a little bit of it has come through with the altar. Um, but uh, yeah, basically the weight of immutable is marshalling behind GOG's launch as this is going to be the first big launch on immutable ZKVM. And we want to do everything in our power to make sure it is a success. Um, we have already been targeting ads uh, across a whole bunch of platforms. Uh, this is largely in the regions uh, that we are in, mostly at the moment focusing on Indonesia uh, and Canada. We are also live in Australia, but that's more for us to be able to test uh, the app directly and not through test flight or uh, uh, test a APKs. Uh, it's just making sure that you know, in Australia, for those of us here, uh, we are actually being able to experience. But we've got a whole bunch of spend set aside to go make all of this happen. Uh, for those of you who don't know game dev, uh, the marketing is often uh, a huge part of the development budget. And yeah, uh, this is all coming to pass. I know the marketing team has been working full tilt towards this. The other side of this will be um, me uh, yeah, going out and promoting the game uh, all over the globe. I do believe they have told me to prepare to travel. Um, the other thing that people have been asking about for a long time, and original plan had been waiting on this longer because it really comes down to data gathering and quality. If people know that uh, their progress will be reset, they're obviously not going to engage in normal patterns. Uh, we have hinted at this, uh, but we wanted to make it uh, official that there will be a global launch reset of the data for GOG. Um, we didn't want to be cagey here, but there were reasons we had to. Um, essentially, uh, with the reset, uh, you know, everyone who has made progress, uh, you know, they <laughs> they have <laughs> made such an absolutely huge contribution to the Guild of Guardians uh, project. Uh, there are things in the work to thank them for that. Uh, anybody who made a fiat in-app purchase uh, will see them restored to their new account. If you made a gem purchase, that will not be restored. Um, but any fiat purchase as well. Um, yeah, um, I'm sure there are questions that are going to come out of that. Um, yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, the other big one that I was hinting at in general chat is we've been doing a lot of thinking about the Founders and Early Access Enlightenment Challenge. Uh, the big takeaway I got from the extended uh, chat with people is the mismatch between essentially uh, your uh, core one uh, guardians and founders and the difficulty of getting both to 15. And as we worked the problem, that was my North Star of uh, if the founder guardians are impossible seemingly impossible or ridiculously expensive to get to 15, uh, then ultimately the logical choice is to just go for the core guardian. So how do we balance that out? Uh, obviously, the altar is now live. And the solution that we settled on is essentially using the altar uh, to get us there. So essentially, you can go into the altar and uh, craft a recipe uh, to get a cracked heart, which will allow you to uh, use that cracked heart in place of a legendary duplicate. You could still use a legendary duplicate. Um, that will not, uh, we will not stop you from doing that, but we wanted a path to make sure that all, uh, all, uh, founders and early access guardians could make it to 15. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, this can only be used, used however, for uh, founders and early adopters guardians at the moment. This is not uh, basically for everyone. Uh, for Web2, um, uh, or I should say Core 1 and Gen 1 guardians, they will need duplicates at the moment. Um, we may extend the system out depending on how it goes. Um, but uh, right now, uh, it is uh, basically just for those two. Um, they are tradable, they will be NFTs, um, and they will, at the moment, the plan is to have them be a limited amount and a limited time. Um, this is something that we wanted to chat to the community a little about. We were 
looking at uh, do we, from this initial set of cracked hearts, uh, set a mint limit that essentially allows all founders and EAs to uh, be upgraded with this iteration of cracked hearts? Uh, do we do multiples? Um, what we are looking at is doing initial run of this, looking at the recipes, analyzing it, and doing it again. It's not that we would never do this again, uh, but some of it is just we don't know exactly how it's going to go. So promising that this would be available for the future and forevermore uh, is challenging. Um, I guess it's one of those promises that I've learned not to keep on that front. Um, essentially, if a heart is uh, the same as uh, a duplicate. So if you need seven, you would need seven cracked hearts for a legendary, as an example. Uh, they're a direct one for one. It's not that you would need two cracked hearts. Um, so yeah, uh, we we had uh, looked at the recipes for this. It's another place that uh, feel free to drop feedback on. Um, the worry, though, and actually why we wanted to talk about it is exactly what uh, Jester brought here. Um, the fear would be that this hurts the floor uh, for Founder Guardians. My take on it is if people are selling their Guardians, there is also going to be more demand by those who are like, it wasn't worth it because of how hard uh, it was to upgrade. Um, that is the one fear uh, that the team had. Um, if people feel like this is going to you know, crack the floor of founders uh, because those who have bought duplicates are going to uh, sell, let us know. Um, but I think this is a good solution um, moving forward. Agreed with Mythic uh, Chef. Like the, the supply of founders is so low that even if some people who have a lot sell, uh, there will be others who now see a reason to go pick those up. I know if people are selling any number of Guardians now, um, I've got a bunch on my shopping list uh, to go buy as well. Um, cool. Uh, sounds like we're pretty aligned. Uh, I tried to guide people to it as well. Um, if there's any feedback on the recipes, uh, feel free to uh, drop them into chat here uh, or beyond. Um, and yeah, we will sort from there. Uh, on the GOG token front, um, this is also why potentially limited time. Some of it is still so challenging at the moment. We will tackle it a little bit later. It's something we're looking to solve, um, but it is still hard to move GOG in to the ZK Unit ecosystem. So there are some concerns about making this too high. Um, but yeah, cool. Uh, and yeah, I guess if the feedback is it's too cheap, uh, I will take that feedback. Um, I would rather that than ridiculously expensive. Um, Cool. Yeah, well, we'll see if GOG stays where it's at uh, for, <laughs> for an extended amount of time. Um, a little bit more on guild crafting. This is going to be at a high level, um, but we've been working through this uh, with the MindLoader team and our internal you know, Web3 economy team. Um, and when it comes to guild uh, crafting, a lot of the original design had focused on your know, guilds being able to create uh, unique equipment that would be the only place where things can be sold. At the moment, we're looking at uh, artifact NFTs that guilds can work together to produce, um, and not just for power. Um, one of the big things that I wanted to do here was have the ecosystem be more than just they create an artifact and they sell it, and then the guild you know, takes uh, their cut, guild leader, all of that of the sale, but they ha have more interconnections between the artifacts and the guilds that craft them. Um, right now, what we're looking at is if you have an artifact, the artifact will juice rewards in uh, the leaderboard, essentially. So uh, how that would then work is of those additional rewards that are coming out of the leaderboard, some of those rewards funnel back into the guild that minted uh, the artifact. So another reason that it's uh, so nice to be on ZKVM, where we can handle this via smart contracts, and essentially creating additional incentives for the guild to not just look to sell for the highest price, but also looking to get artifacts into the hands of the people in their guild that are at the top of the leaderboard. Um, and yeah, create a network of you don't just want your artifact to be sold, but you want this to go to people um, who matter. Um, artifacts will continue to evolve. Uh, this isn't to say that we want to obviate all previous artifacts, uh, but we want to create uh, a reason to continue to generate them. Um, 
and yes, um, they will be sold. Uh, I know the the question here is always like, where are all these precise details on exactly what all these numbers will be? I am also pushing uh, the team uh, on uh, this front. Uh, we will have more on all of the intric intricacies of uh, the guild system moving forward. Um, this is just at that high level overview. Some of that is I'm always going to be hesitant until we get these systems implemented and up and working on testnet uh, before diving down into the exact specifics. Part of this just comes from where we're at. Uh, anytime there are specifics that change, uh, my integrity is called into question. And in a world like that, I'm going to always be a little bit cagey before I know that they are locked. Um, but yeah, we will definitely talk more there. Um, so yeah, what's next? Uh, global launch is obviously the big thing. Uh, while I am in Shanghai, I'm obviously going to be working, as I had said, with the team directly. Um, we're going to have uh, a couple of other team members join in my second week there. Uh, we're going to have what are basically uh, lead game integrations engineer on GOG join to help on uh, just all of the Web3 components, being able to work directly with the team. Um, and we're going to have other leadership there to work on that roadmap ahead once we go live. Um, this is, to, to, to put it bluntly, where the crystal ball for me gets harder. Um, we have plans uh, that are more solid in terms of implementing the next stages of guilds. Um, we have other pieces that they're going to be in reaction to what we're seeing in all of the data from going live at Global Launch. Um, there can be any number of things that make it onto the roadmap out of necessity from what we're getting from the data um, among those few anchor points. Uh, but when we get back um, from Shanghai, we're going to have a better picture there. It will take a little bit of time internal at Immutable to solidify that. And then we will have a town hall explaining more of what's coming ahead. All right, diving into AMA questions, there are a bunch. Um, I'm going to start with the worst news, uh, and it's that pets are not going to make it into Guild of Guardians for global launch. Um, this was one that uh, I was hoping for, um, but the designs that were coming through did not hit the bar for implementation. Um, I've asked the team to go back at it, but it's behind all of the work for Global Launch right now. Um, there is a lot of work going on, uh, particularly with uh, the Guardians. Now that we've got them all up and running, there's a lot of bugs on that front uh, that the team is rushing to fix. Um, but I do want this to be a fast follow in the, the upcoming updates. I don't think it'll be in the very first update, but I'm hoping that we can aim for them in uh, essentially that quarter that follows Global Launch. Can't promise it on that front, but that's my goal at the moment. Um, we'll know more on this once I get back uh, from Shanghai. Um, yeah, that was the one that, that I feel the, 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 the worst about at the moment. Um, In-game store. Will the in-game store sell NFTs or just non-NFT assets that can be minted with certain costs? Um, so the NFT store, in, or I should say the, the, the in-game store uh, will only sell, ever sell Web2 assets. Uh, this is important right now because of compliance with both Apple and Google guidelines for what we can do as a Web3 game uh, on their platforms. Uh, players can make purchases through the in-game store, however, that will allow them to create NFTs as a next step. Um, this is that whole minting cycle of New Guardians uh, with additional costs. Uh, uh, this could change in the future. Uh, if Apple and Google change their guidelines, I think as things uh, solidify in the space in the coming years, this will change. But where we're at right now, we just can't. Um, but And we can't use GOG in-game right now. There's always going to be this extra translation layer. Um, so we're doing things on the outside to allow that translation in. Um, yeah, cool, cool. Uh, founder NFTs, uh, what are the advantages of owning a Founder NFT and what are your plans for its position? Uh, so just going to go through where we're at on this front. So for Founder Guardians, uh, they have a head start on progression when compared to non-founders. Um, this means early game and mid game is going to be less challenging. It'll allow them to go ahead. This is the extra Enlightenment Stars and Radiance. 
Um, they also have you know unique abilities that no other guardians in the game share. Um, and the last part of this comes down to like those of you who have been able to play in the Endless Dungeon and have seen this. Uh, future content may have access requirements that require a player to own or participate uh, in a event. So this can be things along the lines of at its mo most brute, for brute force level, having an endless event where if the guardian is not uh, a founder, uh, its defense is set to zero. Um, essentially, things that um, highly encourage using these uh, with an event. We could have health set to zero if we want to be absolutely brutal with it. Um, but essentially, locking that in, uh, this is one of the plans, particularly for esports guardians, to make sure that we have those esports specific events um, in the future. Uh, Founders guilds, um, as we promised early on, Founders guilds will have unique advantages and capability over non founder guilds. Uh, the founder guilds have more access to more players that additional guilds that uh, guild tokens meant would not have. Um, we are not planning to release any more guilds uh, at the moment. A lot of this will come down to supply. Depending on, on where things stabilize with DAU, MAU, uh, this is where we're going to have to look at that guild capacity once we get past global launch. Uh, Founders Energy Booster, there we we have Web two inefficient versions of the Energy Booster, um, but we have no plans at the moment to mint more NFTs around the Energy Booster in game. So these are essentially um, a a unique position, a unique NFT for founders to have. If at some point far in the future uh, we do mint more of these, they would be inferior to the Founder Energy Boosters. Um, there we go, high level. Gen 1 banners. Uh, and I am going through fast. I'm going to try and save some time at the end uh, for questions. So save them up. I am not reading chat at the moment, just so I can get through all the content, because there's like 30 plus size on the AMA, uh, just for awareness. Uh, Gen 1 banners. About how long after Gen 1 banner is removed would you expect to see it again? A few weeks, months, several years? Um, and the short answer here is when they're needed. Um, in a normal a uh, game like this in just a purely web two where everything is trapped value, you would cycle these you know, every you know, couple of months uh, back in. Because we have the secondary market, we're gonna, we have a lot more to consider that over like a tra traditional just web two ecosystem. So essentially it's, we're gonna rerun run these banners uh, based off the current status of the ecosystem. Um, you, by our current sort of modeling predictions, we would expect them every couple of months. Um, but it's something that could vary considerably based off of how that banner performed. Um, after Gen 1 Core 1 is over and you move on to a second season of Guardians, would Gen 1 banners ever return? Um, my answer here is, again, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but the banner themselves would probably never return. But that doesn't mean that the Gen 1 Core 1 would never be minted again under the current plans. Uh, they could appear in other banners uh, as secondary components. Uh, they could be added into you know, default uh, summoning stones. They could appear as rewards in the latter. Um, a lot of this is going to depend on the shape of the economy and the meta. They also may not appear in any of these. Um, a lot of it's going to depend on how things evolve with that economy and that ecosystem and the availability of these NFTs. Um, it's a lot more complicated than just in a traditional Web2 land. So what we've tried to do on this front is provide ourselves with as many levers as possible to balance out uh, the overall economy. Um, it will go as it goes, and we will adjust as it goes. Um, yeah, next slide. OK, this is going to be me reading, uh, so apologies. But these are answers from the token team. Um, how do you want to handle current difficulties with token accessibility? Uh, so they are actively working on improving market access. And this is one of their core work streams uh, in this cycle as we go towards global launch. Um, they're basically working with market makers uh, to drive uh, incremental exchange listings. They can't, and I can't, comment on any of these uh, directly, um, but they are in negotiations, essentially, with a bunch of rep reputable exchanges. Um, 
These would include unwrapping and off-ramping solutions directly to immutable ZKVM, uh, which should expand liquidity uh, in a meaningful way. Um, there have been cases where you know, specific related jurisdictions uh, uh, related to certain exchanges, local market roll lock, have impacted users' access to the token. Um, unfortunately, these were not communicated to us ahead of time, and we're working with these exchanges to ensure that GOG is front of mind as they work through uh, their local market listings to get them back. Um, but this is something that we don't have control over. All we can do is try and work um, uh, work with them on. Um, in regards to on-chain liquidity, um, we are doing everything we can to make it easier to uh, transfer things in, bridge things across, uh, and essentially get into the ecosystem. Even the altar was a great first look at this. And yes, there were a lot of challenges uh, with the launch of the art altar. I know it took me almost three days uh, to go through uh, the pathways to be able to make a purchase. Uh, that's not good. Uh, that's not good at all. And the team is working to, to streamline that down. Um, IMAX is working on incentives uh, on QuickSwap. Uh, which should uh, attract a, additional total value lock to drive down swapping fees. Um, just an example here of you know, that slippage being smaller than it has been in the past and looking to make this gas free, of course, as well, because it, that's a, a big part of just those additional costs. Um, and in regards to bridging, um, we are hoping to have uh, a lower cost bridging solution from Mutablox to ZK of in the near future. Um, this is one that we did not expect to, to have um, as soon as we potentially will. But like anything, bridges are uh, a scary point of any ecosystem. Uh, the biggest attacks, the biggest hacks happen in the bridge ecosystem. So it's one of those that we're also trying to be very careful with um, to ensure that you know security is at the forefront, but we do expect to have bridging to make it easier for those particularly smaller amounts of GOG to come across in the near future. Um, sales. Why did you do a sale before launch after promising not to? Um, yeah, this is one where uh, I have egg on my face. Um, a lot of it was the promise was made before we knew that we were launching on uh, immutable ZKVM. Um, and the risk of launching globally without systems uh, that had been exercised on ZKVM mainnet was simply too high. And you know the, the scale of the sale is not particularly high. Uh, it is much solid, smaller than past sales, but it was important for us to get a run through of these systems so that we could address them before uh, a much higher expected load. And that has already paid huge dividends um, uh, huge dividends um, just in working with the Passport team, working with some of our partners on making it easier for people to get through uh, KYC, some of the challenges on that front. Um, we have solved uh, a number of problems already that we would have launched globally with, uh, without having this pre-sale. Uh, it also let us tap in uh, to uh, IMX rewards uh, and bring those into GOG. We've seen some of that already um, with the altar. And again, as that sort of trade-off of things, uh, I thought that was important because I do think that we need to bring an element of FOMO to the wider world around GOG's launch. Um, and this initial set of passport quests was part of that. Um, and we're just getting started. Um, I think one of my biggest lessons that I've learned uh, in my nearly five years now at Immutable uh, is that was a miss for me on my early time in GU. Uh, I had focused really on producing a solid game, and that's important. Um, but what we've seen in the wider ecosystem is games that are far inferior to both GU uh, and I believe GOG uh, have seen a lot more user acquisition, a lot more excitement, basically 
around the, the company and the team's ability to create, you know, that fear of missing out. Uh, so some of this is switching some of those dynamics from uh, announcing ahead of time exactly what all of those rewards prog programs will be to having more expen unexpected uh, elements in the mix. Um, my goal here is to increase the possibility space around what those rewards uh, could be. Uh, and yeah, we shall see how that goes. Um, but yeah, expanding out that, I think, is going to be a big part of what will help uh, GOG be what it can be uh, when it goes to global launch. Um, when Will future sales take place in-game as banner sales only, or will there be more seasonal sales external to the app like the one we have going on right now? Uh, the plan for GOG has been to have Web 2 be a baseline, uh, but to have Web 3 be more efficient. And uh, essentially, Airy Store and the Altar is a path that is going to be more efficient than if you had minted those same uh, Guardians uh, via Web 2 pathways. And that is expected to continue going forward. Um, doesn't mean that there will always be direct parity to whatever banner is live in Web 2 land and what is happening in Web 3. Uh, but we do expect more Web3 sales uh, into the future to keep that more efficient path uh, alive. Uh, we will get there when we get there. Um, but yes, I would expect Web3 sales to be online for global launch. Uh, Guardian balancing. Uh, this is a big one. So a whole bunch of new Guardians are in the mix now um, with the addition of the founders uh, via the read-only test. Um, Will there be a hero skill lock after the balancing period so they won't be nerfed in future similar to Gods Unchained? Um, uh, for this, no expectations at all for a lock on Guardian skills and balance. Um, locking them would ensure no nurse, but it also means no buffs as well. The biggest concern I have here is actually on the buffs paths. Um, uh, at the point we're at right now, uh, the combination of guardians, of runes, of equipment, the possibility space is very deep. Um, and having a goal of locking that, uh, it creates more risk of imbalance and of issues than it does. And like the, the cost there, in my overall assessment, is not worth the added benefits. Uh, I do expect we're going to want to, particularly with the founders, uh, continue to buff them going into the future. Um, and the balance is not where I want it to be right now. Uh, to this front, we're aiming to pull in some external help with some people we've worked with before on GU to aid in balancing uh, for launch and beyond. Um, this is something, though, that we will keep our ear to the ground on. Um, if we do get to a point where it's clear that there is stability in the overall balance of things, um, then this is something we could consider. For those of you who have Leah right now, Leah is going to need to get a bit of a nerf, um, particularly because, actually, specifically in her ultimate. Um, uh, this is one that I've actually pinged my litter on a couple of times, um, but uh, I'm not nerfing her into the ground, folks. Leah's freaking amazing, um, but... Uh, she has more AOE damage than some uh, single target damage. Like there, there's 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 challenges there. Uh, we'll see. Uh, there will also be plenty of buffs uh, as well. Um, Ultra minting. Uh, humble brag here by somebody. Uh, I don't know exactly who asked this one, but what the heck do I do with my 1,000 minted heroes? Seriously, I think the altar sacrificing rares is good sync. But what about epics and legendaries? Um, <laughs> okay, that was mythic. Um, uh, Enlightenment, Radiance, and Salvage are all in-game systems that will uh, gladly help you solve your supply challenges. Um, obviously, you can use uh, duplicate heroes to enlighten. Um, duplicate heroes can you be used in Radiance system, and also any of them can be salvaged um, for souls, uh, faction souls. Um, this is also just the first of the Lady of Lights asks in the altar. Uh, we're expecting many more opportunities in the future uh, to use uh, NFTs you've got sitting in your wallets called cold and hard uh, uh, for things, you know, such as cracked hearts. Uh, you cannot crack, craft cracked hearts today. Uh, this is one that we didn't want to 
um, have this system in place uh, until we had run it through uh, the community. Um, I don't have an exact timeline on when this will go online, but uh, I will let you know as soon as we have a launch date for it. Now that we've got a generally good response, we will look probably at the GOG balance. Uh, this is one where I had pushed back on a bit. There had been uh, more GOG ask uh, in some of the earlier recipes. So we'll look at the team on balancing that. Um, but yes, soon. Uh, collection rewards. Uh, can you please talk about collection rewards and clarify, is it just Champion Chroma raffle or is there an actual collections rewards? Um, so the collection rewards for Ares Grand Opening are focused on the Champion Chroma rewards of Salve, Tianlong, and Phoenicia. Players who collect uh, legendaries will have a much higher chance of receiving the reward, uh, but we wanted to make sure that everyone who is collecting Guardians for launch of GOG has a chance to get some of these rewards as well. So it's essentially the, the, the bigger your collection, the, the better your odds. Uh, energy. Uh, why have you not been able to sort out the energy problem despite saying you want to and saying it was a miscommunication between GOG and Mindloader? I don't know, actually know what the miscommunication part between us um, was. Okay, I think I remember that uh, back in time, uh, basically, I, we, we had a misalignment, not so much miscommunication. Uh, I wanted uh, far less time needed to get through your energy. Uh, they wanted more. And I think what we're finding is, uh, listen to Clay. Um, you may have missed the last town hall in March, uh, but the new solution uh, is essentially anchored around auto-completing of dungeons. Uh, it's currently in implementation with Mindloader for global launch. Um, so essentially what uh, you, I think it, it might be an Eastern Western thing just in terms of like the amount of time in game. Um, but essentially, after you complete a dungeon, you can auto-complete that dun dungeon with energy to get rewards out of it without uh, a lot of time commitment. Uh, that alone, out of the changes that are sort of coming through the mix, will have a profound effect on just time commitment in GOG. Um, we're also looking at, uh, like I had referenced it back on that global launch uh, slide, looking at things in terms of reducing the total number of rooms in a lot of the dungeons. Um, room creep had gotten up to the point of many, 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 um, uh, many, many, many rooms, uh, which took a lot of time to, to grind through. So we're trying to find a balance both of having this auto path and less time overall needed for any specific dungeon run. Um, uh, energy is not locked per Guardian, but per account. How will energy token boost it? Uh, the current design for the energy founder's energy booster is um, pro provide fr free redeemable energy, um, increased energy re regenerate, increased max cap, uh, and energy can exceed the cap limit. Uh, ex uh, for example, you could uh, exceed the cap if you've redeemed uh, energy, energy uh, beyond it. Not that you would hit the cap and your regenerate would keep uh, you going beyond. Um, but yeah, it should provide a significant boost to those who have that energy token uh, in game. Um, skin utility. Uh, do we see utility of skin on skins like Warrior, Elite, Chomp, Mythic? Um, there is no expected in-game utility for skins. Uh, we had discussed options for this previously, uh, and they were very vehemently opposed for the community or by the community, um, and and we did walk that back. Um, at the moment, the utility around chromas, specifically beyond this cosmetic utility, uh, would be ultra recipe recipes, which should roll out uh, during live operations uh, in the future. Uh, endless mode. What is the endless uh, format looking like these days? Should we expect big changes in the launch version of the game? All of the tweaking regional test has made endless longer to play, if anything. Um, I guess I don't necessarily agree with the last statement. I don't know. I, I remember playing at launch, and it was like 70 plus rooms, and we're way down below that now. Um, uh, I think we've made strides on this front, um, but we are not done in any way, shape, or form. Um, we can absolutely expect changes to this mode at launch. Uh, Mindloader is currently in the middle of working on a major overhaul of the system. Uh, 
we are looking at adding additional mode. We're calling Boss Rush, which is focused on much shorter runs with much harder encounters. Uh, and we're exploring essentially two different ladders. One being the ladder you have now, where it's a cumulative total of all of your endless runs, and another where it's essentially highest run. So uh, for those with less time, but with a lot of power, they can do a single run and be at the top of that highest run ladder. Um, for those uh, you know, who want to, they can participate in both. We may have both run concurrently. We may cycle them on and off. Uh, this is one of those two where this is something that we're going to experiment uh, as we go through. Um, uh, I did glance over. So are we getting GOG rewards uh, in Endless? Um, so that is a part of... Uh, that is a part of Global Launch, essentially enabling Web3 rewards as part of the leaderboards. Um, in terms of cycling it, it wouldn't be, uh, just for any fear there, it would be more your double dipping. So uh, you could be at the top of one ladder or the other. Um, not that we would have two events going at the same time. At least not at the moment. We will have a moment in the future where we'll have multiple events going at the same time, um, but not along those lines. Uh, cool. All right, we're actually going to have some time to chit chat at the end of all of this. Um, quick hits. Uh, what is the radiance cap for rares, elites, and legendaries? Uh, radiance cap for legendaries: ten, epic seven, and rare four. Uh, will all previously purchased NFTs be usable upon global launch? Uh, and unfortunately, no. Uh, pets will not be implemented for global launch, uh, but everything else is planned to be. Uh, global launch is one month away, and there are a lot of bugs still in the playtest. Will this be cleared up in time? Is the team confident in a global launch on May 15th? Are we looking at another potential delay? Um, every single last bug, no. Um, I've never seen a game ship bug-free, uh, but I do believe we'll address most of them. Uh, on the bug front, uh, this is absolutely a call I made. Um, there was uh, a, a choice to be made. Uh, do we uh, hit the read-only test um, when we targeted it, or do we wait another couple of weeks to basically address uh, some of the bugs that were present? Uh, we shipped with the known bugs. Uh, that was my call, because I felt it was more important to get uh, the read-only test launched than it was to have every bug fixed. Partly to, once we get something live, we always find more bugs that we we're not able to get to in QA. Um, we have identified a whole bunch, the backlog is there, and MindLoader is crunching through them. Uh, this is also a part of me being able to uh, be there on site and working on things as well. Um, quick hits. Will there be a global chat in game? Not at launch. And this is one that my experience with chat and global chat, I'm hesitant on this one. Uh, a lot of it comes down to uh, as soon as you have global chat in a game, uh, risk factors go up on so many fronts. Um, like you guys have been in Web3. Um, uh, you guys have seen the number of scams, the number of issues, just on that Web3 of like, hey, get a free Guardian if you follow this link. And like the danger there in um, Global Chat is not high on my list. When you then take it to the next level, the amount of abuse you see in Global Chat, the amount of bad behavior, not high on my, uh, on my May radar. Getting things like Guild Chat, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but Global Chat, uh, I don't know. Um, something that I would consider, though, uh, if there was enough support for it. And probably if we had an AI that was able to very intelligently uh, identify and eliminate things that would put people at risk, um, which is possible with where things are going. Uh, if you have an existed enlightened hero with no cosmetic, but want to transfer all the stars or an enlightenment to a newly minted or purchased hero with a cosmetic skin, is there a way to transfer enlightenment and radiance? Uh, answer to this is no, not at present. But I do think this is something that we could create via the altar, and some of this would come down to need. I don't expect this to be 
common to start, um, but the ability to essentially um, take an existing guardian, take uh, a skin, and apply that skin to uh, the existing guardian, uh, I can see why you would want to do that. Um, I need to think through the implications, talk to the economy team more about it. Um, but this seems at, like at a base level, like it makes sense. Um, happy to have feedback on this from the community, what uh, the thoughts are there. Um, but it seems interesting. Uh, I think the biggest challenge would be having all of the recipes available um, for every single guardian with every single combination of chroma to do this. Um, yeah, I'll have to think on that front. Um, but plausible, definitely plausible. Uh, is the Volos element being discontinued? I noticed the new banner has Oxalis as Cinder. Can somebody point to me uh, where they saw this? Because this is this is a this is a, the, the Ox is definitely not Cinder. Definitely Volos. Um, it was in game. Um, yeah, that was a that was a miss. Um, Ox is definitely Volos. Uh, cool, thank you. Uh, I couldn't find the banner my, myself when I looked in game, uh, so I will make sure that the team addresses this. Whew. All right, uh, Clay has gone a mile a minute. Sorry, I went really fast because I wasn't quite sure I would get through everything, um, but I did. So we've got a little bit of time to talk with chat here now at uh, the end. Um, yeah, no, that was an amazing speed run. Um, definitely covered a lot of ground there. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going to stop streaming. Mm. And... So I've seen a few questions regarding Guild Wars, so maybe we can tackle this one from Mythic. So could you elaborate any details of Guild functionality, benefits to being in a Guild, the difference between Guild tiers and additional content they may include? Yeah, so that... essen yeah. Yeah, essentially, where we're at right now, Guilds v1 is going to be like just the core basic guild functionality um, where you'll be able to use your token to make your guild, set up your guild, invite people to your guild, promote people to guild leadership levels, all of the basic functionality, but nothing beyond that. The fast follows will be you know guilds uh, v2 and v3 that we talked about previously um, that will come in the next level updates would we'll start to introduce all of those additional uh, benefits uh, beyond. Um, let me see if I can actually find it. So I make sure that I get this right, because I had talked about this when I had talked about this in February. This largely remains unchanged. So let me find that. And apologies, I just can't recall this all right off the top of my head because it's a lot of information. I think it's this one. Thank you for your patience. Listen to the happy music in the background. OK, here we go. So yeah. Um, uh, Guilds like phase two, so that next stage of it um, would be yeah things like guild raids, um, being able to work together to uh, take down uh, guild bosses, uh, and then phase three would be guild crafting. So this is working together, taking those resources from uh, your guild elements and uh, crafting the artifacts and all the benefits uh, beyond. Um, We've made progress on the guild design front and getting some of these details uh, sorted out. The, the challenge here is always the difference between planning and implementation. It never goes quite to spec. Um, I can work with the team to get this into a much more viewable format to give people a more concrete view of exactly what these phasings uh, will be. Can't do this in the next four minutes, um, but I'll add this to my task list. It'll also be a little bit easier once I'm on site in Shanghai 
uh, because I'll be working more in exactly what they have day to day. Because the, the, the changes day to day right now as they're working towards Guildy 1 are uh, significant, but I'm only getting my hands on builds every a couple of days. It's just how the nature of external development works. Um, but yeah, I, I will work with the team on that front because uh, I know there are a lot of questions on that. Um, Awesome. I think there's a quick one here as well. Will there be another town hall before global launch? Um, um I think so. Uh, that's a, it's about roughly the the right timeline. We've got about five weeks. Mm. Um, and yeah, giving people a preview of you know, what's going to go down. Uh, I think I can commit to that. Uh, the only challenge there, uh, guys, is you know for anyone who hasn't launched a game, like. This final stretch here is absolutely the hardest part of development. Um, when I've talked to uh, you know, people uh, in uh, some people who are interviewing, uh, just people who have never been through it uh, before, um, it often comes down to, and like this is why I have my role, terrible choices of uh, time is limited, resources are limited. Uh, what are the things that you need to do to go make launch successful? And what are the things that can wait? Um, it's not fun. Uh, it's making calls uh, along the lines of pets not quite being what you want. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what it is. Uh, and the demands on my time will continue to increase in this march toward global launch. Like, my days will get... Uh, longer and longer, and the cognitive load of just helping people make those calls will go up. Um, uh, but I believe I can pull together a, a good town hall. I don't know if I can commit to a full AMA. Uh, getting all of these uh, into slides and otherwise uh, is usually about a half a day, if not a full day of work on my end. Um, yeah, but at I'd least getting together to the chat, uh, I can absolutely uh, do. Um, yeah, I think, I think a good important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think it's important just to get that communication with the community before we have like a major milestone. Um, that being said, obviously you're going to be very stretched on your end. So I think a good middle middle ground would just be just an update, just to kind of you know get some good positive vibes in the community. Um, and then, yeah, maybe we'll kind of skip a bit over the harder AMA slide session. Yeah, um, we'll see. Um, but I I, I also do really love the the AMA uh, side of things. It. Um, it's always really good to get that insight into what the community is curious about. Um, real quick answer, are cracked hearts the exact same as a dupe or any chance to fail? Uh, no chance to fail. They're the exact same as a dupe. Do you have any more information on the idols, Clay? It seems like it's popping up a bit as well. And what, on the idols? Uh, uh, oh, no, no. The, you don't create FOMO by giving everyone all of the details on all of the things. <laughs> Um, but like I guess at a high level, if, if I were going to talk on uh, like just my my thinking on things like the idols, um, uh, when I uh, was working with a team on what the rewards would be, like we could have just dropped uh, yeah IMX to people who completed uh, the the initial quest, and I didn't want to do that because uh, the altar for me has been something that. Uh, has been a very long time coming. And uh, having uh, a possibility space that is much larger for not just uh, you know, a very limited set of recipes, but the fact that anything could potentially move into a recipe, uh, like the, the power there is huge. And even for something like these cracked hearts, like there's going to be guardians at launch that people just don't like. Uh, I would guess from the way chat is going that Tybor is not liked. Um, if those NFTs have less utility, the altar is a place where even just right now through cracked hearts, like that floor of NFTs has more utility than it has before. And things like the idols, um, I want that unknown of, is there going to be a recipe coming down the line, uh, that's useful to, to them? Will they be used in the future, um, for future rewards for those who held on to them. I, I'm not committing to absolutely anything, but I want that possibility space in the mix because I actually think it's really important uh, for what we do from this point uh, and beyond. 
also one of the things that I'm really excited uh, about just working on immutable like ZKVM, that ability to take even these existing idle contracts and mutate, mutate them into rewarding additional, uh, not idles, but other uh, NFTs. That's fairly low lift and it gives us so much uh, more possibility space than what some of the things that we were able to manage on Immutable X. Immutable X has its own set of advantages that we've got struggles on the immutable Z gave him side of things from uh gas and otherwise but gosh and you guys know just about you know, ingesting uh uh getting tokens in and otherwise uh but god i say otherwise are a lot when i'm starting to get uh mentally a little bit tired um but yeah a lot there awesome i think we also had a question from mythic chef let me just also paste it in the, in the chat so he said, will new stages be released for global launch? Example, Osmire, the Barons, more and less difficulties. Currently, it's easy to order current extreme new Requiem um, stages. Um, so yes, we have a different additional biomes uh, that we're working on. Um, I, off the top of my head, though, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know exactly which update those go live in some are for post launch uh but we already have completed biomes uh that have additional monsters additional uh equipment all of that uh in store for release i don't believe we're going to go uh and unlock them for global launch though um but uh with the reset it's going to take time for people to grind through um and uh we will time those updates you know with people where people are at in the content chain uh, we've got a little bit of information about how that will go based off how regional test launch uh, went, uh, but they're going to be additional factors in global launch that weren't present in uh, the regional test launch. You know, having that additional level of Web3 rewards uh, is going to change the dynamics of everything. Uh, so we will see where that goes. Um... Real quick one, uh, reset confirmed. I don't know if reset means 100% of everything will be reset. So if I paid gems to change my name, will that reset also? So like if you had bought uh, a gem pack and used those gems to reset your name, you will be getting those gems restored because essentially it, the in-app purchase is what's getting reset. Um, uh, if you had earned a bunch of gems uh, through play and those gems are not getting reset. It's just the in-app purchases. So it depends on exactly where those gems were spent. Uh, There's a question and... about mine. Oh, sorry. Um, I was yeah, going to say ahead. about mine loader as well. Um, so so I was asking if they're partners or contractors because they're saying a lot of people would like to see mine loaders as partners. Sorry, are mine loader partners or contracts? Or contractors, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, Mine loader are absolutely uh, partners on Guild of Guardians. Uh, it's one of the biggest changes from Stepico. Uh, I mean, a lot of the original uh, setup, you know, there were incentives for Stepico to keep development going indefinitely because that's how they benefited the most. Um, Mine loader is in a different place. Uh, you know, they are completely committed to the revenue side of things because, uh, yeah, they're they're in that. Uh, level of rev share. Uh, they want the game to go live. They want the game to succeed, and it's it's completely changed the dynamic of the relationship with them. And you know, we are looking to work with them for a long time to come. Um, I've said it before. I will happily say it again. Uh, Mindloader is the best partner uh, for external dev that I have ever worked with. Um, they are truly a fantastic dev team, um, and like. I'm sad to be away from family for two weeks. Um, it's going to be challenging on some fronts, but I am super excited to get time on the ground with them. Um, it it will make a meaningful difference in the game at launch uh, to have that time. Cool, cool. Did you have any last ones that you've seen? Um... Yeah, I'm reading through the chat as well. I think I've seen PvP a few times, if there's any updates on the PvP arena. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, PvP's design is, is pretty simple. Um, 
and it's one of the reasons that it, it actually came on to the roadmap uh, for launch. Um, we obviously have most of the components that are necessary there to be able to you know, set up uh, your defensive guardians. Uh, you have your offensive guardians that you attack others with. Um, and it's mostly just setting up all of those reward mechanics uh, for when you win the battles um, and ultimately uh, that sort of leaderboard element to it. Um, it is not through implementation, so I don't want to go to uh, specific details, but TLDR on that front is if you've played PvP in a mobile game before with squads, it's going to be pretty close and recognizable. Um, yeah. Awesome. I think that might be the bulk of the questions that people want answered today, Clay. So I think we can probably wrap things up here. Yeah, the, 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 the last question that I guess I would get to, too, um, just to, to make sure that people are hearing the message. Um, when it comes to leaderboard rewards, uh, we're not going, we're trying, uh, what I'm trying to work with the, uh, the various teams that uh, go together to make those rewards happen is have launch be something special. Uh, so I think some of the original plans, if we had gone back like six or seven months, is like, this is the reward for leaderboards. It's always the same. It's something you can count on. Uh, and that is not what I want for global launch. Uh, we want this to be a big deal. We want people uh, to come and play. So I, I am hoping that we get everything through so that they're quite juiced uh, in the initial uh, launch of Guild of Guardians. Um, I think that's going to be a big part of what makes noise in the crypto space too. Um, and I think with some of our partnership, that's all partnerships that we've got uh, coming down the line. That's also what will help motivate those. Um, the last part of there is if everything goes correctly to plan, um, one of the things that I've found in system reward design over time too is like back on my MMO days, and when people get to double dip, it feels so good. Like if you want to talk about like dopamine drops, uh, when you're able to go to a quest zone, pick up a bunch of quests, and go do the same task but finish them multiples at the same time, it feels really good. Uh, so trying to get that element into where um, participating in Guild of Guardians, like doing the endless, doing all of uh, the you know investment of your time and effort and energy, uh, pays off not just uh, directly in the leaderboard, but in some other elements as well, if we manage to execute this. And man, we are working hard to make sure that is the case. Thank you, everybody. That was a whole lot. And I lost the thread a couple times along the way. Um, but yeah, we will be chatting as it goes forward. The only other thing that um, I will make a light commitment to is the advantage of being uh, in Shanghai on my own is I am going to have a little less family time in the mix. Uh, so one of the things I'm looking to do is be a little bit more updated about what's going on down on the ground. Uh, so look for me in Discord uh, after I get there. I'm getting there after a red eye at 5 a.m. on a Monday, so don't expect something Monday. But in the following two weeks, uh, I will be around and uh, chat a little bit more than I usually do because uh, it's mostly been limited uh, to the town halls uh, at the moment. It's Thank also you all. Great to see some massive, like, you know, lots of positive sentiment as well, Clay. I don't know if you've been seeing the messages, but um, lots of support in the chat for you and the team. So, yeah, great vibes for everyone. Cool, cool. Yeah, and thank you for all of the feedback along the way. Uh, it has been useful. And I think that would probably be the last thing uh, I do want to say before we go, the goal is not like, like we're not being cagey with guilds because we don't want to let you know what's going to happen. We're just going to surprise it and bam, it's in game and you haven't seen anything. A lot of it has been the guild ecosystems are complex. Getting these tuned uh, is, and just agreement internally is complex. We will come to the community and chat through what we are planning to do before it goes through and goes live. Like this is not like much like the the founder enlightenment. We will have a time to talk through what we're planning before uh, it happens. Uh, so I, I've seen a vein of fear there that uh, our goal is to not let anyone in, uh, know what's going on and just drop it. That is not it. It is very much what I've said in the past of these are incremental stages that build on top of each other. And I'm 
good. I've been doing this for 24 years, but my vision is limited. Uh, I can only project so far out into the future. And games like Guild of Guardians on the timeline we've talked about are incredibly complex. It has been the balancing of so many different elements across multiple internal teams, external teams, multiple resources uh, on uh, so many elements. And I'm so proud of what the team has accomplished. But even my brain has been overwhelmed at times. And as more of these elements of GOG lock in, as the game itself comes together, it gets so much easier to then predict those next stages. And we're getting to that point with global launch, um, even actually regional test launch. Like it closed off so many unknowns for me to get to that point that it's freeing up more mental space for me to now project into the future. And I'll be working with uh, both Mindloader and the internal teams to go add that next step of reality into the mix. Um, and that's some of what you know we'll be talking about in uh, the next town hall, uh, just sort of like the roadmap beyond. It's something I know the internal team really wants better visibility on too. All right, with that, I'm going to go run to the meeting I'm now 10 minutes late for, and I will <laughs> catch you all soon. Cheers. See you, everyone. Thanks for the support. We'll see you next time.